Prime Minister Datu Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob today announced that Malaysia will enter the transition to endemic phase and will reopen its borders starting the 1st of April. He said the decision was made after taking into account several factors, conducting the necessary risk assessment, seeking advice from the Ministry of Health and scrutinizing the recommendations from the quartet ministers. Penting untuk saya maklumkan fasa peralihan ke endemik ini merupakan exit strategi untuk membolehkan kita semua kembali semula kepada kehidupan yang hampir normal selepas hampir dua tahun berperang dengan COVID-19. Fasa ini juga merupakan fasa sementara sebelum negara beralih ke fasa endemik yang mana ianya tertakluk kepada pengumuman yang hanya boleh dibuat oleh WHO ataupun Pertubuhan Kesihatan Sedunia. As such, the Premier said several matters had also been decided to take effect from the 1st of April, such as the wearing of a face mask in public places, still compulsory for all individuals and no more operating hours limits for business premises. He also said that places of worship will no longer have the limit to limit their capacity and interstate travel will be allowed regardless of vaccination status. Malaysia has closed its international borders to foreign travellers since the implementation of the Movement Control Order on 18 March 2020 to curb the spread of COVID-19 in the country. Regarding the opening of the country's borders, Dr. Sri Masabri said this is in line with the plan of entering the transition to endemic phase, as well as announcements to revive the overall national economy, especially the tourism industry, which had been hit by the pandemic. Dengan pembukaan semula sempadan negara ini, rakyat Malaysia yang mempunyai dokumen perjalanan yang sah kini boleh keluar masuk negara seperti biasa serta dibenarkan untuk pergi ke mana-mana negara yang turut membuka pintu sempadannya kepada pengembara luar. Dalam masa yang sama, rakyat luar negara dengan dokumen perjalanan yang sah juga boleh melakukan pergerakan keluar masuk ke Malaysia tanpa perlu lagi memohon My Travel Pass yang akan dimansuhkan. Sebaliknya, hanya perlu muat turun dan mengaktifkan aplikasi My Sejahtera serta melengkapkan pre-departure from melalui fungsi traveller dalam My Sejahtera. A high percentage was seen in the turnout for early voting for the Johor polls today. According to the Election Commission, as at 5 p.m., 87% of the 22,531 early voters had cast their votes at 63 polling centres statewide. The high percentage in early voting, according to analysts, was not surprising as the number of early voters are usually higher than that of the regular category of voters. This is because they comprise police and armed forces personnel and their spouses. They have a higher sense of duty and feel that it is their responsibility to vote. As the number of early voters is small, they will not significantly impact the final result of the election, except in constituencies where there are high concentrations of police or armed forces personnel. The Royal Malaysia Police PDRM in a statement said the early voting process proceeded smoothly. A total of 239 candidates are vying for 56 seats in the Johor State Legislative Assembly. Polling is on Saturday the 12th of June. Only four Malaysians are still in Ukraine and all of them are registered with the Malaysian Embassy in Kyiv. Foreign Minister Dr. Sri Saifuddin Abdullah said the embassy through Malaysian embassies or representatives in countries near Ukraine, especially in Warsaw, Poland, has maintained close contact with the Malaysians in Ukraine. Pihak kedutaan kita sentiasa bersedia untuk membantu sekiranya mereka berhasrat untuk keluar dari Ukraine. Bantuan yang diberikan termasuk memudah cara urusan kemasukan di sempadan-sempadan berkaitan, sempadan negara berkaitan, urusan dokumentasi, contohnya pengeluaran sijil perakuan cemas, 
bagi mereka yang memerlukan menjaga dan memastikan keadaan kebajikan mereka sentiasa terpelihara dan urusan-urusan lain yang berkenaan. On the 45 second video which claimed that a group of Malaysian students are still stranded in Ukraine, the minister said neither the allegation nor their Malaysian citizenship could be confirmed so far. However, he urged Malaysian citizens who are still in Ukraine but have yet to register with the embassy to do so immediately. In a related development, Dato Saifuddin said Malaysia has no intention to impose sanctions on Russia right now as unilateral sanctions are against Malaysian principles and any sanctions should be made through the United Nations UN. Sebagai ahli Human Rights Council, kita sudah uh, mem mem mencadangkan bahawa uh, pertama kita minta ceasefire, kedua rundingan itu diteruskan dan uh, sekiranya perlu uh, sanction uh, boleh dilaksanakan. Tapi kita belum uh, belum sampai ke, ke tahap tersebut. Tapi hakikatnya sekiranya itu perlu ia harus dibuat melalui United Nation. Namun tuan yang dipertua kita juga harus hati-hati dengan sanction ini. Uh, ada waktunya sanction dikenakan tapi kalau tak bersasar yang kena nanti rakyat yang tak berdosa. Jadi kita harus hati-hati dalam soal sanction ini walaupun ia antara senjata ampuh yang boleh digunakan. The minister said this in reply to Wong Chen of Pakatan Harapan. There were no false labour practices found at Saim Dabi Plantations, Berhad, but the firm did fail to report accidents involving its foreign workers within 10 days as stipulated by the law. Human Resources Minister Datuk Suri M. Saravanan said the US Customs and Border Protection CBP agency had earlier barred products from the palm oil producer, citing suspicion of false labour practices in the oil palm industry. However, Datuk Sri Sarvanan said investigations by his ministry through the Labour Department found no forced labour practices by Saim Dabi plantations. He, however, said that there were offences committed under Section 13, Subsection 2 of the Workmen's Compensation Act 1952, whereby the company failed to report accidents involving foreign workers at the Labour's office within 10 days from the date of the accident. This was in response to a question by R. Sivarasa, who asked him to state the results of the ministry's investigations following allegations of false labour practices at Saim Dabi plantations, which saw the CBP barring palm oil products from the company. The minister noted that his ministry has taken measures to address the ban on palm oil imports to the US market. Beberapa inisiatif telah diambil melangani larangan import minyak sawit ke pasar Amerika Syarikat tersebut seperti berikut. Yang pertama menjalankan aktiviti pemeriksaan ke atas syarikat-syarikat yang dikenakan perintah tahan pelepasan untuk menyiasat dakwaan buruh paksa dalam operasi pengeluaran syarikat. Yang kedua menjalankan penguatkuasaan bersepadu bersama agensi penguatkuasa lain seperti Polis Diraja Malaysia, Jabatan Immigration Malaysia bagi mengenal pasti kesalahan-kesalahan eksportasi. Uh, line yang boleh membawa kepada elemen pemerdagangan orang. On another note, Dr. Sri Saranen said the shortage of manpower due to the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic has caused the plantation sector to lose up to 20 billion ringgit last year. He said one of the most affected sectors was oil palm plantations, which depended on foreign labour. Therefore, he said, the ministry is opening the registration and determining the quota to bring in foreign workers at the end of this month to meet the needs of the sector. Uh, kita lihat warga tempatan tidak tunjuk minat dalam sektor ini walaupun hampir setahun kita tarik supaya peluang-peluang uh, ini diberikan kepada warga tempatan. Tetapi warga tempatan masih lagi belum uh, menunjuk minat dalam sektor ini khususnya sektor. The minister also said, taking into account the rapid technological changes, the government emphasised on training and worker development programmes. He said this was to create a highly skilled and competent local workforce, as well as to meet the current and future needs of the industry. Datu Sri Sarvanen added that the 2022 budget has allocated for the Malaysian Family Job Guarantee Initiative theme, Keluarga Malaysia, Magmur Sejahtera, 
to support the goal of reducing the unemployment rate by providing 600,000 job opportunities this year, with an allocation of 4.8 billion ringgit. Coming up next, Malaysia remains an attractive global investment destination. Stay with us. Malaysia recorded 306.5 billion ringgit worth of approved investments in the manufacturing services and primary sectors in 2021, the highest amount of approved investments since 2006. Senior Minister of International Trade and Industry, MITI, that's a Sri Muhammad Azmin Ali, said the country remained an attractive investment destination for global and regional business expansions. He noted that the total foreign direct investment FDI and domestic direct investment DDI numbers exceeded expectations in 2021, increasing by 83.1% compared to 2020. For the manufacturing services and primary sectors, charting an astounding 83.1% increase compared to the performance in 2020. This is a record-breaking figure as it is the highest approved investments ever. That is three, Mohamed Azmin said this at the Malaysian Investment Development Authority's MIDA Annual Media Conference, AMC 2022, in the nation's capital today. According to the minister, additional measures were put in place to ensure that the business ecosystem remains responsive to global trends, with policies and initiatives for business facilitation, talent upskilling and reskilling, digitalization and automation. As many as 50% or 17,543 buyers of one Malaysia housing program, Prima, projects nationwide, are young people aged 25 to 35 as of December last year. Housing and local government minister, Dr. Sri Rezal American, Nine American, said that last year, 34% or 1,904 Prima home buyers were from this group. Pula Prima juga telah memperkenalkan inisiatif youth home ownership yang menyasarkan peningkatan pemilikan rumah prima di kalangan golongan muda dari 50.3% ke 70% pada penghujung tahun 2022. Dr. Sri Rizal further noted that the ministry was also planning to provide youth transit housing RTB in several locations in the Klang Valley following high house prices and rental rates in the area to help young people own a house. He said a total of two RTB projects have been proposed in Mukim Batu, Kuala Lumpur and one project in Rawang, Selangor. The minister added that his ministry's big agenda on housing will focus on the 5K concept, namely availability, affordability, financing facilities, quality and livability housing unit. In other news, 15 female climbers have embarked on an expedition to conquer the Everest Base Camp in conjunction with 2022 Women's Day celebration. The expedition dubbed Everest Base Camp, or EBC, Mountaineering the Femina, was flagged off by Women, Family and Community Development Minister Dr. Sri Rina Harun at the Kuala Lumpur International Airport, KLIA, this morning. Speaking to reporters after flagging off the expedition, Dato Sri Rina prayed for the mission to proceed smoothly and hoped that the spirit displayed by the climbers would inspire as well as motivate other women. Bila di sana mereka bukan sahaja membawa nama wanita tetapi juga membawa nama Malaysia. Inilah sumbangan eh, wanita hebat kepada negara. She added that their success would also prove that women could do anything they set their minds to. Dr. Sri Rina said the expedition, which involved climbers from various backgrounds, including civil servants and students, coincided with the 2022 Women's Day celebration theme, Saksama Bursama, through the team spirit demonstrated by all participants. Expedition leader, Associate Professor Dr. Farha Abdul Gapa said all the climbers comprising those aged 22 to 56 were eager to start their mission, which had been delayed since 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. 
She added that prior to the pandemic, the entourage underwent training by scaling several mountains inside and outside of the country, including in the Philippines. Kami pergi tu semasa sempadan tutuplah PKP yang pertama hari tu uh, dua minggu dua minggu sebelum kita pergi sempadan tutup. Uh, jadi sebenarnya kami dah training ni dah sejak dari tahun 2019 lah. Upon reaching the EBC, which sits at 5,364 meters above sea level, they had planned to lay out a giant T-shirt of the size of 250 XL to gain an entry in the Malaysia Book of Records. And in sports, last-minute KOM decision allows Haikal Hanafi to compete in SEA Games. Stay with us. Reigning Southeast Asia Sprint King, Muhammad Haikal Hanafi can breathe a sigh of relief as he was shortlisted at the last minute for the Hanoi SEA Games 2022. However, Malaysia Athletics Federation KOM President Dato S. M. Mutu said he will not be competing in the 100-meter dash event which he won in the 2019 edition in the Philippines. Instead, KOM has decided that the Negeri Sembilan-born athlete will be participating in the quartet for the 4 times 100 meter men's event in Vietnam under Category B. Haikal will be alongside Muhammad Arshad Mat Saad, Russell Alexander Nasir Taib and Muhammad Azim Muhammad Fahmi for the event. Muhammad Arshad and Russell Alexander will be competing in the 100 meter men's dash. Earlier today, National Athletics squad head coach Muhammad Manshaha Abdul Jalil had said the two were among 15 athletes to have qualified under Category A of fully funded. Previously, Haikal was unsuccessful in getting past the qualifiers on merit to the SEA Games, despite having won goal in the 97th Malaysian Open last week. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have. And wrapping up the news at 10 in our top story tonight, PM announces Malaysia's transition to endemic phase. Join us for more updates at 12.30 PM tomorrow. Till then, it's lights out. I'm Brenda LePaul. To all members of Keluarga Malaysia, have a pleasant evening.